What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I bring you episode 6 of this 25k challenge. We are actually almost done with this so I'm going to be uploading a lot more often uh, just because we're getting closer to the end and I feel like uh, you know just in case we have a big day where you know we actually you know finish the challenge you know I, I want to get as much uh, educational you know uh, trading days up as possible. So uh, basically today you had nothing really special in the market you had a few runners uh, you know and we had a bunch of earnings after hours we had BYD earnings they disappointed uh, Disney actually fell four dollars after after hours and then you know finally returned back up so Disney had a d decent earnings judging by after hours we'll see in the morning how that really goes and then I believe one more had earnings uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember what 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 other earnings there was after hours. But some big things here. Spy finally above 330. Uh, we're currently nine points away from all-time highs before the before the crash in March because of the coronavirus. Uh, Stay-at-home uh, orders and all that good stuff. Uh, but if you look at Spy here, I mean this is after hours, but. We hit 33, 330.11, but if you look at it on the four hour, we actually had a high of 339. So we're really like nine points away uh, from all time highs. Are we gonna get there? Well, we're gonna find out. This coming week, we got a stimulus bill in the works. Uh, Pelosi announced that they're trying to work on it and get it out by Friday. So I believe that could you know take us to the next level, maybe see all time highs, which is crazy enough to say that if you look at the chart here at 217 from 340 you know who who would have thought we would have got back this quick but it's different from 2007 everybody tries to bring up that same recession we had in 2007 2000 uh the dot-com bubble the housing uh you know the bubble that we had there the difference is the fed acted quickly this year right the difference is when the housing bubble exploded Nobody expected that. Nobody even saw it coming. Obviously, some people saw it coming. Some people, obviously, the big banks knew something was going to happen. They were just taking advantage of time. Uh, and the Fed, this time, as soon as the coronavirus started, uh, you know, taking a toll on the U.S., they knew that they had to act quick so that we wouldn't enter a, you know, an extreme recession like 2008 and it wouldn't take as long to recover obviously they did say we did enter a recession everybody was home we had unemployment at extreme highs all-time highs uh, but the difference is the Fed knew exactly what to do and when to do it how to you know you know liquidate the market uh, bonds and you know just just put everything together so well and they did a really good job so Let's get started with the trades today and really go into detail about all my trades today. So one thing I'm going to point out is forget about Apple. That's just an open position that I'm swinging into tomorrow. I'm currently up 200 bucks on it. AMD, I had a day trade, but I'm currently in a swing for it. Excuse me. But I did make 500 bucks from it. Uh, 500 and change, maybe like, uh, I'm not, yeah, around 500. So 500 almost 520 Netflix I had a thousand dollars on there Roku I mean 2000 and then spy I'm just swinging as you can see open and day so let's start with AMD AMD had a really big day uh, let's go back to the one minute so yeah let's go with AMD and then we'll do Netflix and then do Roku. actually yeah we'll do it in that order forget it uh, Let's go to AMD. So, what happened with AMD? Oh, I gotta show you guys my balance. Here we are. The balance uh, is at eighty thousand, almost eighty-one thousand. We're like sixty bucks away, but uh, you know we're getting closer. We're about nineteen thousand away. So, uh, my goal is by the end of August. I'm in no rush. Even if I don't finish it in August, I'll take it as far as I need to. Whatever. Uh, but. Uh, we have AMD here. So AMD actually got an upgrade, more of a, you know, it wasn't really an upgrade, but they got a price target. So they reiterated what they had already talked about it. They just ha hired the price target. So they went from uh, 95, uh, from $86 to $95 at Jefferies, right? This is a momentum stock. So when that type of, uh, type of news hits a stock like this, this stock likes to act on it right so where's the news I just had it 
right here at 11.09, but it really came out in the morning. That was a little uh, late article. But as you can see, I've been waiting on this $80 break all, well now, I wouldn't say all week, but at least for the last like couple days. Uh, let me show you the last five days. So we got in close, we got into the 79 range multiple times. Uh, we got close. Here we are about to break $80, uh, July 31st and July uh, 30th. And I was just waiting for that $80 break. Sadly, uh, I don't like chasing things, especially right off open. You see how it pushed like this? I was expecting a pullback right at 80. Did not come, I was absolutely wrong. And uh, you know, it's better safe than sorry. Yes, you wanna, you are, you're gonna have every, you know, every gut in your body tell you to get in, you know, risk it, get in there, it's moving. But that's when you have to discipline yourself and say, chill, just take a step back. But, you know, the discipline costed me to miss out. And that's something you have to accept. So it, went, it broke my $80 uh, area here, shot up to 82 uh, and pulled back a little bit. And then, you know, it's just started, you know, consolidating here and then at the end of the day this thing rallied all the way up to $86 still very bullish uh, this was my AMD trade uh, I got in on the break of 82.94 the new high and then as soon as that happened it pushed all the way up to 83.35 took a quick scalp and walk away because I missed the bigger move I knew I was only gonna have to take I was gonna have to take the smaller move so I took that little piece right there uh, percentage wise Premiums flipped when it got above 83. I had the $83 call, so uh, I just flipped the premiums on that. A little push there, and then I came out with you no know, $500 uh, profit. So that's the AMD trade. Roku was the biggest trade of the day for me. Obviously, you guys saw that. Uh, let me show you what happened here. So in the morning, uh, I was waiting for the new high. Wow, this was actually a big ass consolidation for the day. Yeah, so whatever. Roku uh, pushed in the morning, right? It pushed from open 164 to 167. It was actually up overnight anyways. It was up from 162. So it was already up a great deal. Let me show you what we talked about in the last video. Remember I said B uh, Roku was breaking out? Guess what it's doing? It's breaking out. We talked about this in the previous video. Uh, look at the four hour. It's been consolidating, consolidating, and it's finally pushing above this level. Uh, and now today... It pushed in the morning, took a pullback, a nice little bull flag uh, on the one minute. If you look at it on the five minute, it came down. It's kind of ugly on the five minute actually, but uh, here's the one minute. I traded it off the one minute, pulled back, and then made a new high. Got in at that 167 break right here, 167.08. Uh, pushed all the way up to 168, and I got out at 168. Premiums flipped. Uh, I made two, over $2,000 on this. Roku was just a quick scalp. Missed the AMD play. AMD would have paid the best in the morning. But that was the Roku play. Very strong. Finally breaking out on these uh, this bigger chart right here. Uh, and we have earnings. So if earnings comes out, earnings comes out tomorrow. If earnings comes out very positive uh, or, you know, you know, good, Roku is going to be, look, it's going to shoot. So Roku is in a very good position to, very, to take off. It's actually only $10 away from all-time highs. And if they beat earnings, I think they're, this is a $200 stock. But that's my opinion. I'm just saying that if they beat earnings, I'm not even trying to guess if they're going to beat or miss. I don't care. I trade it to both sides. But if they do, you're looking at a, a nice little squeeze to the upside. So Roku, that was my Roku trade. Netflix, let's talk about Netflix. Same thing with Netflix. I've been waiting for Netflix to get out of this little uh, consolidation it's been stuck in ever since earnings. As you can see, it took that big dip. You know recovered a little bit made it look like it was going to come back but that's that's called a relief rally you need to di di differentiate uh between uh you know a recovery and a relief rally so relief rally makes it look like it's recovering but it really isn't as you can see it pushed up came back to support at around 470 pushed up came back to 480 made a higher low showing that it's trying to push to the upper side uh, and we finally got above this 505 area. 505 is really what I was looking at. Uh, and we actually are near 510. 510 was my target for the day. And we hit 510. So let me show you where I entered and where I exited so that you guys know. All right. Um, 
As we got above uh, this 505 area, it quickly got rejected. You see these wicks over here? I was very happy about that. If you put it on the five minute, you'll be able to see it as well. Uh, so on the five minute, it got above uh, 505 real quickly and then pulled back. So once it pulled back, I was like, okay, I'd rather play it on a pullback than try to get in on something like an AMD push. So what it did, it pulled back to 503. I said, all right, if it comes back, I'll play it. Next candle, it breaks a new high from 503. 505.39, it pushes, uh, I get in on the break right here at 505.40, 505.50, this pushes all the way up to 507.43, uh, and then I held a little bit, and I ended up selling on this candle when it pushed up to 508, 508.20, so I ended up selling on this candle, I could have easily held uh, a little bit longer, but I'm actually pretty happy that I sold on this candle because, well I could have sold it at 509, I sold on this candle actually. Sold on this candle, I obviously could have sold on this candle right here. Hit a high of like 509 before dipping, almost 509. Uh, but later on, it, I mean it pulled back, later on got to 510. I'm happy with the little scalp that I pulled off with this one. I waited for the break of the 505 area uh, on the five minute and on the one minute. And it was just a very nice uptrend for the rest of the day. It kind of consolidated uh, when it broke that 509. It didn't really move much. Uh, but that was my play on Netflix. Those were all my plays for episode, what are we on, six, right? So those were my trades for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be uploading every day that I trade, red or green, doesn't matter, uh, till the end of the season. Uh, I don't trade every day. We talked about this. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you guys want me to add anything to the video, make sure you comment down below. And check out the description for any more information about me. I'll see you guys. Peace.